Okay, let's talk about dplyr. First of all, what is this thing? What does it stand for? I'm not really sure. I googled it, typed in what does dplyr stand for, and I found this on Stack Overflow. Somebody's guessing the D stands for data. And someone else says, um, well, it's an extension of something called the plier package. And, and plier refers to a set of pliers <laughs> to manipulate things with, sort of like a tool. If we look at our studio and uh, look at the description of the dplyr package, it says a grammar of data manipulation. And that's pretty much all it tells us, a grammar of data manipulation. That's a pretty good description of this package. It's very useful for manipulating data. I think of it almost like a Rubik's Cube package. It helps us turn around and select the things we want from a data frame and then do things we want with the data frame, like perhaps calculate some means or standard deviations for specific parts of the data. We're not going to do a complete tutorial on this package. We're going to focus on some of the things that we've talked about in lab two. Let's look at lab two. This is where we're computing descriptive statistics in R. Let's scroll down to the part where we loaded the Gapminder data set. So we could find that. Describing Gapminder. All right. Here's what we needed to do. Let's take those two lines of code, make a new code block. Now the first part's going to load the Gapminder library. If you have it installed that, install that under packages. You should be able to see that it's been clicked on here. Now, once this has been loaded, if we run this next line, what's going to happen is we're going to put the Gapminder dataset into a new variable that we're calling Gapminder underscore df. Let's run that line. And here we have it. The data frame has been put into the data or into the environment. Let's click this and take a look at it. We can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six columns. First column is country. We've got lots of different countries here. Second column is continent. A few different continents. We've got a uh, year. And for each country in a particular continent in a particular year, we've got some data about life expectancy, the population, and the GDP per capita. Great. There's always one row uh, for each of the countries, continents, and years. All right. Let's go back to lab two. And, well, okay, let's start here. The question was, what are some descriptives for life expectancy by continent? Take this whole bit of code, pop it in. We'll quickly run this and let's talk about what's going on. Here's the output, summary DF right here. Let's look at it. What we are looking at is a new data frame sorted by each of the continents. We've got means, standard deviations, the minimum value, and the maximum value. For what? For the life expectancy variable. Let's talk about what happened here. First of all, we start off by writing the name of the data frame with all of the data. That's called gapminder underscore df. The next part is this 
percent arrow percent. That's called a pipe. I think about it like a Lego, building Legos. We're connecting things here and we can connect lots of things in a row. Let's look at the next thing that we connect. So we're connecting an operation to the data frame. The first connection is called group by. And that's the name of the function. If we were to go look in the dplyr package, we would see that there is a group by function. And what it does is group by one or more variables. We've typed the name of a column in the data frame inside the group by function. The name is continent. If we're to look at the gapminder data, we can see there's a column with different continents. Asia, Europe, Africa, America, and so on. Every country is in a particular continent. What we're asking dplyr to do for us is to separate the data frame into each into the rows for each of the continents. We end that with another pipe, uh, which basically means we're going to connect one more thing to this workflow. What we've connected to the last part of it is a summarize function. A summarize function allows us to make some computations and give each of our computations a new name. So for example, what we're doing in here is we're creating a column called means and we're going to put in that column the mean of the life expectancy column. The next one does the standard deviation, puts it in a column named SDS. Then we've got one to find the minimum. That's going to be put into a column named min, and one to find the maximum. That's going to be put into the column called max. If we look at our summary DF, which is the output of all of this, we can indeed see we've got a column for the continents, and then one column each for our summaries, means, SDS, or standard deviations, min, and max. All right, so that's a starting point here. Let's talk a little, a little bit more about what's going on. To do this, let's go down to the generalization questions. Let's talk about how we might solve them. First question is, what is the mean standard deviation minimum and maximum life expectancy for all of the gap minder data across all of the years and countries and continents? And it's giving us a hint do not use group by. I'm going to copy all of this, make a little note, make a little comment, generalization number one. And let's call it something else. Let's call this all descriptives. All right. What we're trying to do here is compute the mean, standard deviation, minimum and maximum of life expectancy. So this whole part is perfect for what we want to do. But we want to do that to the entire data frame. We don't want to group it by anything. So let's delete this line. I'm just spacing this over so it looks easier to read. Now if we run this, we should see a, an output called all descriptives, and here it is. All right, now we only see one line here because there's only one group mean or total mean for the entire data. 
of life for life expectancy. There's only one standard deviation. There's only one. There's only one minimum and there's only one maximum. This is the equivalent of writing something like this. Like let's say we wanted to find out, sorry, using the original Gapminder D data frame. Let's say we wanted to find out the mean life expectancy. This is for the entire column, all 1,704 rows. We can do something like this. We've got 59.47. Or we could compute the standard deviation. Great. And those are the two numbers that we had found before using the dplyr method. Let's look at the second question. What is the mean standard deviation minimum maximum life expectancy for all of the continents in 2007? which is the most recent year in the data set. And it's giving us a hint. Add another pipe using filter year equals 2007. So how would we do that? Let's call this generalization number two. Now remember, we are, uh, what we're doing here is we're starting out with all of the data. We are grouping it by continent. And we're gonna add another thing in here called filter. We're gonna filter the year so that it equals 2007. We're using two equal signs. Add another pipe because after we're done filtering, we're going to summarize these things. We put that all into summary DF again. So let's take a look and see what that looks like. And here we've done it. Let's mess around with this some more. So I'm going to actually take this part, put it down here. Now, if we run this line of code, notice we're not, we're not using this assignment variable. Uh, if we did something like this, we would put the results of this part of the code into this thing with this name. Just deleting this part for illustration purposes. And now if we run this, it's going to show an output right away in R. Here's the output. So now we can play around with the code to get a better sense of what it's doing and also look at the output while we do that. First thing I want to do is get rid of summarize. Okay. Let's talk about what's going on here. We're taking the original data, we're piping it into the grouping function, and then we're filtering it to find only the rows where the year is 2007. There's a little red X is showing us our code won't work. That's because we've added a pipe operator at the end. Whenever we do that, R is expecting more things to happen. We don't want any to do any more things in this case, so we'll delete that last pipe operator. So what do you think is going to happen if we run this line of code? Let's find out. All right. Okay, so we are finding all of the data with the year 2007 in it. What happens if we wanted to find um, all of the data with year 2007 as well as the country Afghanistan, for example? We could add another thing to the filter. So we would have to give it the country name equals Afghanistan. Now if we run this, we have selected 
only the Afghanistan country in the year 2007. What do you think would happen if we took the year 2007 out of the filter? Actually, we don't need this group by thing. Let's, let's get rid of that. So I'm making this, now we're only just doing one thing. We're starting with the original data frame and we're going to do a filtering operation. All right. Well, actually, it's not that easy to see all of this. It's truncating the output. It's only showing us the first 10 things. Let's put this into the variable A. Now we can look at A. And notice the only things we are seeing have Afghanistan as one of the countries. So it's selecting only the rows where that part is true. What if we wanted to filter by year? Let's do 2007 again. We can see there's 142 rows. There's lots of different countries and continents, but the year is only ever 2007. So we've selected that year. So that's what filtering does. It allows you to select particular rows for particular things. And we can make things more complicated. For example, watch what this does. Let's find a few different countries. So let's look at the Gapminder data. We could see Afghanistan. Well, let's do Albania and Algeria. There's two countries. Make sure we spell them right. Let's see what happens if we run this. All right, we've selected, uh, we've selected Albania and Algeria. Let's talk a little bit about what we did here. When you want to have multiple selections, um, one way to do it is like this. So here's the name of the column, country. We're basically saying, find all of the rows in this column whose names are in any of these ones here. And uh, we're basically saying, look for that. And if it is true that the row in country is one of these names, then keep it. And as you can see, that's what, that's what it's doing. I'm wondering what else we can show you here. Well, let's end with that. As you can see, what we're on, on the right-hand side here, we're looking through dplyr, and there's many, many functions that dplyr can do. You can add columns, take away columns, filter, group, summarize data. We'll see some of these other operations as we go forward in the labs throughout this semester.